Hi, I'm W5IG and my name is Lee. And uh, I've been a ham for about 60 years and had a number of automobiles. Had my ham license before I had my driver's license. But as soon as I was able to get a car, first thing I did is put a mobile in it. And I put a mobile in this car. This is my current automobile. And uh, some of my friends looked at it and they said, well, that's, that's kind of unique. Putting uh, 10 pounds of stuffing in a five pound turkey, trying to get all of that in this car kind of makes a weird looking turkey. But uh, they convinced me that I ought to make a YouTube of all the features that it has, and so I'll let you decide if uh, we did the right thing or not. Okay, well here I am in the uh, cockpit of my little Mini Cooper, and uh, I'm trying to uh, set it up here so I can show you what I have in front, how we put it in, and how it uh, operates. Now, first of all, let me dispel some worry you might have. This sitting where it sits is not in my line of view. I can see over it and I can see the hood and uh, therefore I can see as much as I can see of the road as if it wasn't there so it's not blocking my view for those of you who are safety conscious we try to be safety conscious also. Now this is a Yesu 857D and it's got a little uh, Collins type knob which I put a little necker knob they used to call it, a little spinner on it and you can turn it by having your hand on the stern wheel and you can tune like this. You don't have to take your hand off the steering wheel while you're tuning. It's loose enough that it turns real easily. It's tight enough that it doesn't go off frequency when you hit a bump. Okay, <clears throat> yeah, let's go over here. This is a digital watt meter. Keeps track of the amount of power you're putting out. It's also good for tuning the antenna. This is LDG's meter that plugs into the 857. It's a wonderful little meter. Gives you S meter readings on receive and uh, SWR readings and output readings when you're transmitting. I use that also for tuning the antenna for different frequencies. Come down here. This is uh, Ameritron's remote power amplifier head. The amplifier is in the back. We'll get to that a little bit later. It's a 500 watt amplifier and this uh, controls it all from up here. You can turn it on and off and switch frequencies all the way uh, back there from up here. It works pretty good. I have my GPS over here and it's set up to where it uh, is plugged in and goes to a speaker behind me and uh, uh, it got a little amplifier of its own so you can hear it and we'll get into that a little bit deeper also all right uh, first of all all of this is installed with double-sided velcro now there's a little microphone up here and that little microphone is for the hands-free telephone which is down under my steering wheel here it's just a little hands-free phone, and I also have a speaker for it behind me. Okay, let's move further into the cockpit here, down a little bit, and down into this area. Uh, first of all, I've got a, a covered switch here that is hooked up to a large relay in the trunk, and that turns everything on the whole radio equipment on and off, all with one switch. So I can have everything preset wherever I want it, flip one switch, and everything comes on. Now, this is a small amplifier, and this little amplifier is on the GPS. And that means that it plugs into the earphone of the GPS, goes to a speaker behind my head where, so I can hear the GPS when the lovely little lady with the British accent talks to me. This is a clear speech digital processor that is on the speaker output. And we come down here to the gear shift lever. The box on the gear shift lever has a button and a switch. That's the push to talk. The button is push to talk when you're talking barefoot or if the uh, 857 is on two meters, then you can use this button to talk. If you use the switch, it will also, if you don't have the amplifier turned on, it'll run the uh, push to talk. You can flip it up, so if you're driving, you can just flip it and put your hand back on the wheel and continue to drive. And when you're through transmitting, you can reach down and switch it off. But if you've got the amplifier turned on and you're on HF, when you flip this, it also turns the amplifier on. Pushing the button would put you on HF on uh, barefoot without the amplifier. So you have to use the switch if you're going to use the amplifier. Use the button if you're just barefoot. Now this box down here is a homemade uh, outfit that has a meter on it to show the, the amount of current that whatever motor it's looking at uh, is pulling. 
and it gives you an idea like for instance it's set up to tune the antenna this rocker switch will tune the antenna manually when you get to the end of the run end of the coil this red light will light up and the meter will show more power you're pulling because the motor is, is being held dead and when it does that then you know to stop pushing the button if you run down to the other end of the coil it'll do it at the other end also this switch here when you switch this back what it does is it cuts the motor speed on the antenna tuning in half so you can very detail tune if you want to get a just exact right spot for tuning on your antenna now there are two little switches down here on the front of the box this one is a tuning switch for the transmitter if you switch that switch up it puts the transmitter in CW at very low power and gives you a tuning signal so you can tune the antenna with it if you switch this switch in this direction that uses this rocker switch for tuning the antenna manually if you switch the switch in this direction then you use this rocker switch to bring your microphone around so that you can have a hands-free microphone while you're talking on the radio okay what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the switch on this box to the microphone position and push the button on the rocker switch for microphone and when I do that you'll see coming into the picture this is the microphone coming around to be used to talk on and now when it settles in position there you have a microphone and you can talk on your radio without taking your hands off the steering wheel you can use the buttons on the gear shift for push to talk or if you need both hands on the wheel you can use the switch on the gear shift to switch it on and get both hands on the steering wheel and when you want to put the microphone back where it was just push the rocker arm back up where it was and it puts the microphone back into the back seat again out of the way okay the outside speaker here is for the ham radio equipment. The center speaker is for the GPS and the right hand speaker if you're sitting in the car is for the uh, hands-free telephone. This is a speaker box but there's a motor in it that drives the microphone when it comes up in front of you and it just I put it in a speaker box so it kind of matches all along there. Okay, one of the most important things on a mobile is the antenna system. Let me show you what I've got on this one. This is the 2 meter 440 antenna. It sits up here. It's a high gain antenna. As you notice, the mount down here mounts inside the trunk lid so that any holes that I drilled are out of view inside the trunk lid. And you come over here. This is a high Q type antenna and uh, it is a basically a bug catcher that has a motor in it that tunes the bug catcher up and down like a screwdriver antenna. It's mounted down here. Okay, I wanted to explain what I've got here. This is just a connection so that when you take this off, quick disconnect, you can unplug it. All this is is a choke to keep the RF off the motor that's in here so that you don't transmit and change the frequency. Originally there was a hole already punched through the bumper, went into a tow hook, it's a tow circle that drove in there. You screw the tow circle in if you want to hook a tow, tow uh, uh, strap or something to it to pull somebody. What I did is I drilled holes in that and mounted a plate to it, screwed it in good and tight, gave me a good ground, and on that plate I mounted this antenna, and this is very solid. This also has a brace up here. The brace has got some equipment that is epoxy that's a, it's a non RF conductive. It has a belt like you got one of these clip belts on here so that you can undo it, take it off. This is a quick disconnect down here. You can spin it, take it off, and remove the entire antenna if you wish. You took it back up like that. If you want to take this part down and make it shorter, you just use the bayonet, quick disconnect. Got a quick disconnect nail port down here. Put it on, twist it, and it'll stay. As I explained earlier, 
the amplifier, the transmitter box, and all of the heavy good duty stuff is all in the trunk. Well, fortunately, Mini Cooper doesn't have a Mini Cooper convertible does not have a spare tire. They use run flat tires, so they don't have a spare tire. And since they don't have a spare tire, that leaves the spare tire well empty. So what I did is I built a box, put this cover on it, in the spare tire well. Okay, in the trunk, we have in the spare tire well, there's a wooden box goes all the way around it that this lid fits on and uh, it fits down on there and seals it up. But over here starting on the left, this is an un, -un which matches, it's an unbalanced to unbalanced transformer which matches the output of the amplifier to the input of the antenna. About 16 ohms is what it is. This is the control box or the sensor unit, sender unit for the digital watt meter. This is a 2 farad capacitor. I borrowed that idea from my friends with all the sound systems in their cars to go boom, 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 boom down the street. They put those in so that when they get a big boom, it doesn't lower the voltage. The voltage stays up and the peaks stay up where they belong. That works the same thing with transmitting. When you're talking on single sideband and you get a peak, that 2 farad capacitor keeps the voltage from going below 12 volts. And it uh, makes a big difference in how much the actual output is. This is the uh, amplifier. It's a 500 watt amplifier. The unit in back of the amplifier back there on the white board is the big relay uh, system that controls all of the power on the whole system. Turns everything on and off with one switch under the dash that, that I showed you earlier. This is the main box for the 857D. You'll notice I've got all kinds of these little filters on all the wires. They're on all the wires up under here. There's probably 20 of them used in back here and going up front and up under the dash to keep RF off all those lines. Okay, let me explain the cooling system here because one of the first things you would think of is how does all this stuff stay cool. Actually, I don't have a problem with it because the amplifier sits on top of a wooden board that has a hole cut out of it and that hole is covered with screen and the screen matches up with the louvers on the bottom of the amplifier there's a fan in the amplifier draws air up through the bottom and up through that screen and out the amplifier and into the top part of the trunk back in here that air then goes through some holes down in here and down in here down into the bottom of the car and okay these are the vents that the air comes out of down here now, this is a low pressure area on the car when it's traveling down the road so that actually sucks air out of the inside of the trunk and pulls air through the amplifier and all of the air inside the trunk it gets pulled out these vents keeps everything quite nicely cool open this again the battery is underneath the amplifier it sits in a well just below the amplifier it's a 1000 cranking amp battery got a 125 amp alternator hooked to it the amplifier is only about uh, less than two foot from the battery including going through the two farad capacitor so number six wire two foot of it doesn't lose you very much voltage works pretty good and the, the battery is designed to be vented down through and out the bottom of the car like I was talking about so in having the amplifier in that line of vent then it cools the amplifier too now there's a little fan right over here that has a thermostat on it when it gets the temperature gets to 120 degrees back here it blows across the fins of the heat sink on the 857D and keeps that cool Okay, well, that's our little tour of my mobile installation. It took about uh, almost two years to uh, install all of this, and uh, it's been in use now for about four years, so, uh, plus the two. So a uh, total of six years we've been using it. I haven't had any difficulty with it. Everything seems to be working quite well. Made a number of contacts on it. Maybe even talked to some of you out there. If not, we hope to talk to you soon in the future. And if you hear W5IG on mobile or on the home station, give me a call. Thank you.